Would you turn to Psalm 133? Psalm 133. Hallelujah. In Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Unity. Everyone say unity. unity. For it is like the precious oil upon the head. The oil represents the anointing. Running down the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the what? The blessing. And what was the blessing? Life forevermore. Again, unity. Unity. It's good for brethren to dwell in unity. It means unite into oneness with Christ. We unite into oneness with Christ. And in this, we unite into oneness in the body of Christ. Has everybody got this? And in this, with the body of Christ and uniting in the body of Christ, he says, where there's unity, there's the anointing. Where there's unity, there's the anointing. And one of the things that the enemy always wants to do is try to bring division in you. Hello? In you first, because the Bible says a house divided cannot stand. Or he likes to try to bring division. That's why you hear many ministries fold. Because the enemy infiltrates and brings division. And then people, the, a place splits or goes whatever, and it begins to divide. But again, it's important that we maintain unity. Unity is an area of like-mindedness. Where there's unity, there's like-mindedness. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In verse 12. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Is everyone there? Let's speak it together. For as the body is one and as many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into what? One body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and they've all been made to drink into one spirit. Now, when you worship, you're drinking. You're drinking into the spirit. See, the body, again, is one. It's unified by drinking into one spirit. There's only one spirit. He's known as the Holy Spirit. It represents of the anointing. So by drinking of the spirit... It will promote oneness with Christ and we will become like-minded with the mind of Christ. Can you imagine the advancement if everyone was baptized in the Spirit, like-minded with the Holy Spirit? What an advancement there would be. What a tremendous advancement of the body of Christ. There wouldn't be denominations. There wouldn't be competition. Pride would be on their people's feet. And the whole purpose was to ma maintain unity. Unity. See, one of the things the enemy likes to do is bring division in any way he can and separate unity. He wants to separate. And in the separation, what he does is then infiltrate. You know, I was, I was in the, I was, I went and spoke to a, um, an addiction program, a secular addiction program in the jail Friday. And I was asking the Holy Spirit, what do you want to talk about? And one of the things he said, ask them a couple questions. And the first question I said, I asked was, why do you get high? Why do you drink? Why do you use drugs? Why do you do that? Really, let's think about it. Why do you do that? And they, well, for a feeling. Okay, you're trying to, why do you want, what, what's this feeling you're looking for? Why do you want, because it feels good. And why are you looking for this feeling? Well, because I'm trying to push out some of the things of the world. I'm trying to push out some pains. I'm trying to cover up certain things. So this is why you take drugs. Yeah. And, I, and, and the Holy Spirit began to bring more in depth about certain things about, okay, so we're, ser, ser, we're searching out things in the world that are trying to bring us a feeling. It's a deceptive feeling because 
This feeling that we're looking for is the presence of God. Because it's where we came from. So the whole time we're looking for this feeling that's going to supposedly fix our problems. (laughs) It actually increases more problems. Because the enemy deceives. It's a deceptive feeling. So people go out. They work real hard to get a lot of money. Because they believe that money is going to provide for them. It's going to secure them. See, they're looking for a feeling. People jump in one bed for another to another, from relationships to relationships because they're looking for a feeling. They want to be successful in all things. They look for a feeling. There's nothing wrong with success. But these feelings that come between you and God are deceptive. And what it does is it causes separation and not unity. But you don't know my circumstances. I was raped this. I was done. But see, you're still looking for something to cover up a hurt, a scar, a pain, a wound, or a fear with something that the devil offers you, and it just promotes more. That's all it does. Because the feeling we're looking for is that utopia feeling of peace, joy, and righteousness, which you can only get from the presence of the Creator, your Father, because that's where we came from. So we're always looking for home. We're looking for home. So you go to the doctor because you're having certain mental problems. Well, you don't understand, Lord. I've got, I hear these voices. Well, who doesn't? Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm having these strange things. Well, hello. So here, take this, this false feeling that's going to promote more damage. So you've ever read, read any of the effects, side effects of some of the stuff they give people. What is the side effect? Suicide. Isn't that what, <laughs> isn't that what the, we're trying to prevent? Overdose and suicide? Well, it promotes it because it's false. It's a lie. So people get in a worse state than before. But in this, this feeling that we're looking for is home. And you can't replace it with anything that the world has to offer you. You can't replace it with success. You can't replace it with fame. You can't replace it with uh, sex, drugs, alcohol, rock and roll, or anything else. You can't replace it. And there's only one that maintains unity, and that's the presence of God. Everything else will separate you from like-mindedness with the mind of Christ. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. Romans 15. Romans chapter 15, verse 3. Let's speak it together. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproach of those who reproach you fell on me. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now may the God of patience and comfort. Patience is the word for endurance. You must endure. Endure. Press through. And comfort grant you to be what? Like-minded toward one another according to Christ. That you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now listen, this is powerful because he talks about one mind and one mouth to glorify God. Has everybody got it? In this, we are looking in the area where we're not just looking for our own interests, but we're looking out for others also, aren't we? Well, that can only be done if we're like-minded. If we're like-minded with the Spirit. And there's things that promote like-mindedness, not only by drinking of the Spirit promotes like-mindedness, 
But there's something else that promotes like-mindedness, and that's to hear it through. Hearing it through. So many times people do not hear things all the way through from what the Spirit is saying. Hearing it through. Everyone say, hearing it through. through. Go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. So again, one of the things that the enemy wants to do is prevent us from being like-minded. If he can prevent us from being like-minded, he's going to promote division. And anything that he can do. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1, let's read it. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each one esteem others better than him. In other words, in humbleness. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but for what? Also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And that being found in the appearance as man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. So in this, there's an area where you and I maintain a place of humbleness because the Bible says submit to God to resist the devil. Without submitting to God, there's going to be division established. It's going to first start in you. Division has never started outside of you. It's inside of you. It's inside of you. Why? Because what the enemy has done is he's broke the yoke of like-mindedness. If the enemy can break the yoke of like-mindedness, he will begin to slip in and begin to put in deception. So, we're not only looking out for our own interests, we're drinking of the Spirit under the anointing, walking in the anointing. We're looking out for ourselves and for others, and we're looking out for ourselves and others to maintain like-mindedness. So, in this, we not only need to see things through, but we need to hear things through. The Bible says faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing. See, many times people get short-sighted in faith. I mean, in hearing. Do you ever talk to someone and they always cut you off? Because they can't hear it through? You're trying to explain. (sighs) See, they have a hard time receiving instruction. I want you to grab hold of this. The amount you hear is the amount you see. If you can only hear so much... Because the enemy loves to put limitations on your hearing. You only see as far as you can hear. In Luke 4. In Luke 4. Everyone say, hearing it through. Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. You know, in the book of Revelation, everything ends. Every letter that was sent to the churches in the book of Revelation ended with, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Why isn't it at the beginning? Because he wanted to have them hear it all the way through. Then he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. I'm telling you, it is time to hear it all the way through, what the Spirit is saying. Not only partial what he's saying. Oh, I got it. Yeah, right. You don't get it until you hear it all the way through. Because when you hear it all the way through, you'll see it all the way through. Other than that, the enemy loves to bring interruption. He's got interrupter spirits. As soon as you say, yeah, I know, I know. Do you ever talk to someone that's all they say, I know, I know, I know, I know? Or they don't know. Because if they knew, they wouldn't have done it over again. (laughs) Hello? See, when you know... And you see it all the way through, you don't do it over again. 
Luke 4, 16. Let's go there. Hallelujah. Let's go there. Okay, let me get there. Let's speak it together. So Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book out of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. Come on, say it with me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Everyone said, that's for me. In verse 20. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture is what? Fulfilled what? In your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? Now, I want you to grab hold of this because only those who could hear it through were able to see it through. They were able to see beyond Joseph's son. Has everybody got it? They were able to see beyond Joseph's son because, see, they knew the scriptures and they were waiting for the one to come into the synagogue. They were waiting for that one to come in and say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and today it is fulfilled. Those who saw it, who heard it all the way through, were able to see through Joseph and the natural and they were able to see the Christ. But those who didn't hear it through couldn't see it through. Is everybody okay? Go to Matthew 13. That's why they didn't see Jesus when he came, right? And they were preaching. They were preaching everything that was spoken in the Torah. And it was all written about him that was coming. In the book of Isaiah. It was all prophesied. They were all speaking it and teaching it. But nobody was hearing it through. But when they heard it through, only those who heard it through recognized the Messiah when he came. Nicodemus was one of them. He went to him at night. He didn't want to get thrown out of the Sanhedrin club. He had lost his membership. So he went to him at night. I wonder if they had tennis courts there. So he went to Jesus and said, no, and he says, listen, I know God's with you, man. I, I, I read about you. I know about this. Now, how do I get born again? How, how do you do this? Does a man have to go through his mother's womb again? He's looking at him saying, who told you that? You need to be born of the Spirit. There's a difference. Oh, hallelujah. In Matthew 13, in verse 13. And in verse 13, and Jesus says, therefore, I speak to them in what parables, because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand. Why? Because they will not be able to hear it all the way through. And seeing you will not see. And uh, seeing you will see and not perceive. Why? Because if they couldn't hear it all the way through, they couldn't see it all the way through. Verse 15. For the hearts of this people have what? Grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Do you see how hearing goes before seeing? Lest they should what? See with their eyes and hear with their what? Their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn 
so that I should what? Heal them. So that I should what? Heal them. But, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and hear what you hear and did not hear it. Hearing it through will cause you to see it through. Jesus had to speak in parables to bring them a picture because he knew they couldn't hear it all the way through. So his hope was that the parable that he would give them would give them hope and vision. But they were not able to hear it all the way through. And when you can't hear it all the way through, the enemy will insert deception to promote a a flawed belief system. When you're not hearing, hearing it all the way through, the enemy will promote deception to produce a flawed belief system. And if your belief system is flawed, so is your perception. So everybody got it. So you'll perceive things incorrect. There are times when the enemy will begin to, because an individual or individuals don't hear it all the way through, what happens is the enemy inserts deception. Now individuals are looking at things that are only wrong instead of things that are right. And it becomes criticism, accusing. So now they're only looking at something wrong instead of the things that are right. And this is where we must be careful right now because this is how the enemy is infiltrating the body of Christ and causing division in every way he can. Because people are more and more concerned about their own interests and not the others. See, when the enemy brings you into a place of your own interests and not others, that insert of deception is already there. Amen? Hebrews chapter 5. Now, one of the things that our spirit is always trying to do is to bring us divine instruction. Everyone say divine instruction. And that, that will be established because we're like-minded. In other words, when the spirit speaks to us, if we're like-minded and it's a divine instruction... We're able to hear it all the way through, and we're going to see it all the way through. There's going to be a change. Hebrews 5. That's why the Bible says, don't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Come out from among them. In Hebrews 5 and verse 5, let's speak it together. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son today, I have begotten you. And as he also says to another, in another place, you are a what? Priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death, And was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. To all who what? Obey him. Called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Of whom... We have much to say and hard to explain since you have become what? Dull of hearing. When you become dull of hearing, you are short of hearing. You are short of hearing. In other words, you're not able to hear it all the way through because the enemy has set limitations for you to hear. You're only going to hear for so much. Did you ever notice that sometimes it's like listening to a song. You don't need to hear it all. You're not hearing it all the way through. You hear some of it or somebody be talking to you and all of a sudden it's like, you know, I don't want to hear anymore. And here's this person, they be they could be trying to bring you something, bring you some information. But your that voice is saying, I know it. I got it. I'm I know it. I know it. I got it. I'm all right. I'm dead. I don't need to hear the rest of this and this. Well, God is trying to bring an instruction. He's trying to bring a what? Instruction. See, so many times we're, we're looking at man instead of God. 
And we've got to look. We see we've got to continue to look beyond the natural realm, looking through the natural to realize that the Lord knows everything that's going on and he's trying to set everything in place and in time. He's training us and preparing us. That's what it's all about. He's preparing you and me right now for his coming. He's preparing you and me for what's getting ready to happen in this world. Because it's happening and there is no turning back. He's preparing you and me to stand strong in all storms when we see others fall aside. He's preparing you and me because there's only one that's going to stand between you and God and that's the devil. So you've got to get the devil out of the way so it's only you and God. Hallelujah. People become dull of hearing or short of hearing. Limitations are set by pride. Everyone say pride. pride. Limitations are set by pride. So you can't hear it all the way through. And if you can hear it all the way through, you can see it all the way through, right? Amen. So in this, if when we see it all the way through, we're able to discern what is of God and what's not of God. We're able to discern what is of God and not of God. When we're hearing it all the way through and seeing it all the way through. Again, there are interrupters of the demonic forces that influence self. You know, think about it. They just had a, uh, a debate, two vice presidents. One of them interrupted the other, or the vice president and, and uh, Ryan, I don't know. The vice president interrupted Ryan 83 times. Well, you know who was behind him? An interrupter. Interrupted the man 83 times, would not let him finish. Do you know why? Because the enemy fears if you hear it all the way through. Oh, glory. First Corinthians chapter two. He who has an ear, let him hear. First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Let's speak it. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love him. But God is what? Reveal them to us through his what? Through his what? Through his spirit. For the spirit searches what? All things. Yes, the deep things of god the deep things of god are instructions that are vital they are vital these are not surface things these are vital instructions from the lord that are going to prevent danger to your life they're going to prevent catastrophes you know the devil comes to steal kill and destroy doesn't he well when you see that happening in your life you know he's got access to you and something that must turn around. And that's something that we must do is be able to hear all the way through what the Spirit is saying. Amen? To see is to hear, and to hear it through will see it through. And oneness is established then, oneness with the mind of Christ. But to hear only part, you'll only see part. And you may miss the vital information that the Spirit is trying to bring to us. And every time, every area where there's a limitation of hearing, the enemy is inserting. He's inserting. He's bringing doubt. He's bringing fear. He's bringing unbelief. He's bringing confusion. And he's bringing memories from your past. Job 33. Job 33.
Man, you're all quiet today. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Are you hearing it through? <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> I mean, do you want the whole truth or partial truth? You know? Because see, when you only get a partial truth, and that's what new age is. New age is partial truth. See, they mix partial truth with lies. That's new age, isn't it? And new age is from the demonic forces of evil. They're interrupters. Hallelujah. Job 33 and verse 12. Let's speak it together. Look, in this you are not righteous. I will answer you. For God is greater than man. Why do you contend with him? For he does not give an accounting of any of his words. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their what? Instruction. He opens the ears of men in order to what? Turn man from his deed and what? Conceal pride from man. Wow. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So it's important that we hear the instruction of the Lord. It's like getting instructions on how to operate something. So you only read half of the instructions and you try to figure the rest out and it takes you three days to do it. When if you read it all the way through, you'd find out that you could have done it right away. Real simple. I'm not going there. Praise God. <laughs> so he must be open to instruction. Amen. Go to Psalm 50. <laughs> Psalm 50. Now, are the wicked open to instruction? No. Hallelujah. In verse 16, Psalm 50, 16. He says what? But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth? Seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you consented with him and have been a partaker with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done and I kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you. And set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. That's a powerful, powerful psalm saying of the Lord. You know, so many people, they want to serve in ministry, but yet they don't want to get their house in order. God will not allow you to serve until you're in order. You know. You know, people make many commitments of vows and so forth, but they can't fulfill them. And they think it's just okay not seeing it all the way through. Because they're not hearing the instruction all the way through. I tell you, if you've made a vow with God, and something has happened in your life that you've made a vow with, if you're hearing it all the way through, you will fulfill it. But the enemy always tries to break vows because it brings a curse on the person. Is everybody okay? Proverbs chapter 1. Hating instruction means an individual that refuses to hear. Many people take these vows nonchalantly. 
yeah, I promised this and I promised that and I didn't fulfill it. Eh, God will forgive me. Yeah, well, you're still going to reap. The thing is, is God may forgive you. Of course, he will. But will he trust you? Well, the Lord forgives me. Yes. But if you can't keep making commitments and vows and don't fulfill them, is God going to trust you? No. So if he can't trust you, is he going to put you in ministry? No. Hallelujah. Proverbs 1. Is everybody there? So there's something we got to do is what? Hear it through. Why? Because we're receiving instruction. Hear it through. Proverbs 1, 7. Would you read it with me? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and what? Instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. Wow. Proverbs 10. Hearing it through. Proverbs 10 and verse 17. Let's speak it together, please. He who keeps what? Instruction is in the way of life. So if you keep instruction, did you hear it all the way through? Yes. But he refuses correction goes what? Astray. Whoever hides hatred has lying lips and whoever spreads slander is a fool wow go to 12 1 proverbs 12 verse 1 verse 1 let's read it whoever loves instruction loves knowledge but he who hates correction is stupid that's plain and simple isn't it <laughs> Verse 2. A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions, he will what? Condemn. Verse 3. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be moved. Why? Because they what? Hear it all the way through. Go to Hebrews 12. Hearing it through. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Not just, listen, you, you can't just hear what you want to hear and throw out the rest. You know, the Bible, it's amazing how many times that people, you know, I'll go into places and begin to speak about the Spirit and so forth, and they're like, well, yeah, what do you mean? That was done with. There's no more gifts of the Spirit. There's no more. Well, I don't know what Bible you're reading. Obviously, you have selective hearing. Jesus still casts out devils, lays hands on the sick, raises the dead. He hasn't changed. See, but let me tell you, when selective hearing comes in, what it does is it puts blame on others, criticizes, and promotes self. Selective hearing because they're not willing to hear it all the way through. Prejudges things before it's time. And Hebrews 12, is everybody there? And uh, verse 3. Let's speak it. For consider him who what? Endured such hostility from sinners against himself lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have, not resist, you have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. In other words, he wants you to hear it all the way through. 
I, can you imagine standing before God and he's speaking to you and say, hold on a sec. I got something to say. I mean, I don't think any of us is going to interrupt when, this, when God is speaking. <laughs> You'd have to be stupid. But how many times do we interrupt when the Spirit is speaking? It's called grieving the Spirit. People don't realize how many times we grieve the Spirit by interrupting Him. Verse 7. It says, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with what? Sons, for what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his what? Holiness or divine nature. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been what? Trained by. So you're going to be trained by correction. You're going to be trained by instruction. You're going to be trained by hearing it through. And you're going to be trained by suffering. Aren't we, isn't that why we're here? We're to be trained, right? And I'm going to close at Hebrews 4. Hearing it through. You know, you need to ask, Lord, give me the ears to hear it through. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7. <laughs> Hebrews 3, 7. Let's read it together. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion and the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if, if what? If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. In other words, hearing it all the way through. It's important to hear it through so you can see it through. You know, many times, things that we hear, we speak. So if you hear it all the way through, you know it's God, then you speak. Because what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. Amen? So that's why it's important that things that we hear, we must hear them all the way through. Do not agree with the things that are wicked. Do not agree with slandering. Do not agree with backbiting. Do not agree with rebellion. Don't agree with it. It's our responsibility to stop it. Shut it down. Why? Because what you speak is what you eat. And what you hear is what you'll speak. So be careful. Because deception is rampant. The weapon of deception is what's destroying mankind and bringing division in an individual in the houses of God. Deception. It's Satan's greatest weapon. Amen? So be careful. Be careful at your workplace. Be careful wherever you go. Make sure that you hear the Spirit all the way through. And don't hear the devil all the way through, please. <laughs> Shut him down, man. Shut the devil down. Shut that voice of doubt. Shut that voice of confusion. Shut that voice of fear. Shut that voice of unbelief. Shut that voice of criticism, grumbling and complaining and gossip and slander. Shut it down. Shut the coarse jesting down. Shut it down. 
and hear what the Spirit says all the way through. Why? Because the more you do, the more you'll earn God's trust. Amen? And one thing we don't want to do is lose his trust. We want to gain it. Everybody okay? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed grow and bear fruit for your glory. Lord, we know that we are in the days of deception and great deception. There's deception on the news. There's deception in the radio. Deception all around. The weapon of deception is before us in all areas. But Lord, we choose to remove deception before us and put Christ before us. That we may follow you. Hear you. See you. Speak you. And trust you. Lord, protect us today and guide us in the path of righteousness. That you may be glorified in each and every one. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.